There's a place I know that I hold near and dear to my heart called Brown Town. Now, you may have never been there, but once you hear about it, you could swear that you've been on its streets before. You've seen the street lights, smelled the air, heard the hustle and bustle of its people going about their days. It's not the biggest town or the most prestigious, and it isn't getting much notice for being the best at anything in particular for that matter. But it sure isn't the scariest or dirtiest, most boring place either. You can pick any part of town and find something to do, or at the very least, someone interesting to talk to. But if you want my opinion, there's only one part of town that can truly make you understand the feeling I get whenever I'm there. Let me tell you a little something about downtown Brown Town. The Ethelstein Community Center is a hub for the various town-sponsored events organized by various volunteer groups and other local organizations. From weekly bingo nights to silent auctions and blood drives, the Community Center hosts all manners of events every week and is always open to provide a place for anything that can be dreamt up to bolster a sense of community in Browntown. Private events aren't turned away from the center, but most people understand that there are places better suited to private functions than a place with community in its title. Previously known simply as the Browntown Community Center, or BCC for short, the City Council approved renaming the center after a pillar of the community who championed development of the city's social programs and events throughout a long career working at the BCC. Though she herself refused to let them rename the center in her honor while she still worked there, after she retired, the city quickly rallied to rebrand the BCC under the new Ethel Stein Community Center moniker. Ethel volunteered at the BCC after school to get community service hours towards a scholarship from Browntown High. At the time, she was described by staff as, quote, an adorable and terrifying ruler, like a sleeping lion, end quote. Ethel came into the center with expectations of how things should be run. And when they didn't meet those expectations, she made it very clear that things would need to change. Normally, you would expect grown adults to be dismissive of a child trying to make demands at their new volunteer program, and this is reasonable. However, Ethel Stein was not your typical bossy child. She had a vision for her work, and the only thing stronger than that was her work ethic. According to staff at the time, within two hours of her first day, she had finished everything assigned to her and was on the hunt for new projects to tackle. The BCC had been infiltrated by someone so incredibly competent and motivated that the only solution management could think of was to capitulate to her demands and allow her to seize direct control. At least until she would leave for the day, which would allow for some hours respite from the storm of productivity. Between the hours of 3 p.m. and 6 p.m., Ethel would assume direct control and pilot the community center towards the completion of projects previously believed to be impossible, or at the very least, someone else's problem for another day. Within her first year, the community center went from an often overlooked and underutilized resource for the people of Browntown to one of the most integral components of the city's operations. Previously unused spaces in the center became highly sought after spaces every week for hosting cooking classes, hobbyist meetings, club outings, bingo nights, and food drives. The reach of the community center extended outside of the building itself and onto the streets through organizing community cleanups, spring planting parties, outdoor barbecues, and benefit concerts in the park. All starting from this one high schooler with a passion for doing the very best she could for those around her. 
For as long as it had existed, the community center had been nothing more than a checkbox on a list of places needed by any self-respecting town. Occasionally, someone would remember it existed and see what events were running, only to see that the last time anyone advertised an event there was for a previous city council member's niece's first communion party over 20 years ago. Those who attended were less than thrilled and knew the venue was chosen as a way to cut costs by the council member who had offered to handle the party thanks to their new cushy city politician job, only to realize that they weren't actually getting a salary that could afford throwing extravagant parties for no reason. Needless to say, Browntown had always needed someone to rescue this space from obscurity and to help foster the sense of community it was designed to create. Instead, Browntown got Ethel. And Ethel did not simply rescue the community center. She did so much more. Ethel found the community center, gave it purpose, and pushed everyone in the community to utilize it as much as they could to make it not only the center of the community, but the center of Browntown. She knew what having a strong and vibrant place to gather and share amongst each other would bring to the city she grew up in, and she wanted to be sure that everyone else could see it too. Autumn of her first year at the BCC saw an entire harvest festival, Halloween fair, Thanksgiving food drive, fall community cleanup, and Thursday night book club scheduled and executed under her commanding leadership. Winter saw similar successes with holiday light viewing, a parks department animal track identification workshop, several snow-themed competitions including snow people, snow forts, snowball fights, and snowshoeing races. Once again, Ethel organized a food drive for the holiday season and combined it with a clothing donation program. She also set up a volunteer list for community service hours with the high school to help shovel older residents' properties and expanded the Thursday night book club to Wednesday night as well. Spring started with a community cleanup again, followed by spring planting, garden showcases, bird watching tours, fundraising for a soup kitchen addition to the community center, and a silent auction to benefit the local animal shelter. This was immediately followed by a craft fair, a local artist exhibition, a baking competition, and a third expansion of the book club, which required splitting both groups across Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Ethel then collaborated with the library in order to properly oversee the book club, as she wanted to continue work with the community center, and the book club was far better suited to the touch of a skilled librarian. Then came summer. The very first summer Browntown had ever experienced since the arrival of Ethel Stein at the head of the community center. The town had grown quite accustomed to the non-stop line of activities and events being hosted and organized around the community center. As spring came to a close, plans for the soup kitchen were finalized, and construction was set to begin as soon as summer vacation began for schools. And as schools finished for the year, so too did the after-school program which allowed for Ethel to revitalize the community center. Now, this would have been incredibly inconvenient for the community as a whole, which is why long before this could become a pitfall to blindside her, Ethel strode into the mayor's office and had them sign an exception which would allow her to continue working with the community center outside of the after-school program. This exception was how Ethel was able to head so many projects throughout the various weekends and holidays throughout the year up to the end of the school year in the first place. However, even strong-arming a local legislator couldn't solve the complications the community center was facing as spring came to a close. The Stein family had a summer tradition of traveling to see distant relatives for the entire season while the kids were on break. This meant the town would have an entire summer without Ethel leading the community center. Some at the community center heaved a sigh of relief when they heard their small commander-in-chief would be gone for three months. Others were terrified of what Ethel would leave behind for them to do while she was gone. Or, even worse, what she would have them do the minute she was back from vacation. It truly was impressive just how much of a commanding grasp this child was able to maintain over these adults, even when she wasn't present. And when Ethel left with her family for the summer, she didn't leave behind anything. No instructions, 
no new events. No previously scheduled classes, charitable drives, or community cleanups. The community center's summer schedule was completely blank outside of the ongoing construction. And it remained completely blank for about 30 minutes. Because within that short span of time, the staff not only began organizing events of their own volition, but members of the community began calling in to plan and request community activities too. As soon as staff added a community cleanup, a local musician called to request a live music festival on the town green. Local restaurants wrote in to request a summer block party to showcase local businesses for tourists and townies alike. The Parks Department once again wanted to collaborate by planning hikes and summer programs for the kids. The Fire Department sponsored a food drive through the community center, while Waste Management started a recreational basketball league using the resources provided by the center. When Ethel returned, everything with the community center was running nearly as smoothly as when she had left. New programs had been thriving, old programs were continuing, and it seemed like every day there were new requests and ideas for events. Members of the staff, who were previously completely content with doing as little as possible, were spearheading new community activities and initiatives. Ethel could even have been surprised by all of what was going on, if she hadn't been calling the center every day from wherever she was to get updates on what everyone was doing. She herself never put in suggestions or advice, she just wanted to hear about what was happening in her absence. So, when she returned, Ethel immediately expanded on what had been done, refining scheduling at supply chains for events, running a last minute summer reading book club for students who were too busy enjoying their summers and needed to catch up before classes started again, and putting in the necessary paperwork for expanding the after school program she had previously enrolled in to include positions in the soon to be open soup kitchen. The first summer was the main reason why Ethel refused to let Browntown name the community center after her. It wasn't simply because it would be weird working at a building and program named after you when you're still a teenager or even as an adult. It was because, to Ethel, it had always been Brown Town's community center, not just hers. She didn't want people to forget that it was the entire community who truly got the center up and running when the chips were down. All she had done was show them the potential an establishment like that can provide them. For several years, members of the community urged Ethel to run for mayor, as she would surely win. And although this was true, she was, and still is, always the most popular write-in during elections, she never wanted to run. Whenever anyone asked, she used to make excuses of not being ready, or not knowing enough, or having enough to deal with running the community center. But eventually, after enough people bugged her about it, she let them all know how she really felt. Quote, things work best when I get to do what I want, when I want. It's not exactly democratic, but it gets things done the right way. And people are a lot happier when they don't know exactly how we get the nice things we have. End quote. Even so, people still ask her to run every year. And she has turned them down every year. Now the Ethelstein Community Center is even more established than ever. An entire block of the town has been incorporated into the center, forming it into a massive multifunctional compound. An outdoor auditorium, various fields and courts for rec league sports, multiple reservable rooms for various classes and workshops, office and study spaces, even a full-fledged cafeteria addition has been made for the soup kitchen. Even without Ethel at the helm, the center is constantly helping members of the community to host and experience all kinds of events throughout the year. The current head of the center knows she has big shoes to fill, but is confident that with all she's learned from her grandma, she'll be able to keep things running smoothly. And if Beth is anything like her grandmother, the Ethel Stein Community Center will be in very capable hands for a very long time.